الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to the secrets of Hajj نعم One of the secrets of Hajj, my dear brothers and sisters, is that the Haji, the person who goes for Hajj, he uh, he, he starts, you know, um, uh, uh, practicing what is known as Ukhuwatul Islam, uh, brotherhood in Islam. Why? Because he meets different kind, I mean, different uh, uh, kind of people, uh, different races, different uh, languages. People come from coming from all over the world now to the same place and the goal is the same now they all have the same goal uh, and they adorn the same kind of cloth which is al-ihram the two piece of cloth now so he develops what is known as al-ukhuwa and muslims are brothers to one another innama al-mu'minuna ikhwa allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says innama al-mu'minuna ikhwa the believers are only Brothers, we are brothers in an Islam. So you come and you meet your brothers from Nigeria, your brothers from Congo, your brothers from South Africa. You come to uh, to the Holy Land, to Mecca, and you meet brothers from your brothers from Indonesia. Now, your sisters from Malaysia, your sisters from Africa, from Asia, from, uh, you know, everywhere, from all over the world. Now, so this is one of the secrets of Hajj that you come to learn, you know, uh, uh, brotherhood. And you come to meet so many people coming from different uh, uh, places. And the goal is one which is to uh, 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 please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also, you come to understand that each and everyone who is there, they are like you, you have responded to the call of Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salatu wassalam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has called you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam to proclaim to the whole world the hajj. And you responded to the call. Allah ta'ala called you. You respond to the call of Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salatu wassalam. Now, so the person that you meet in hajj, he has responded to the same call. Remember when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Nabi Ibrahim, وَأَذِّنْ فِي النَّاسِ بِالْحَجِّ That you should proclaim to the people about hajj. يَأَتُوكَ رِجَالًا They will come to you walking on foot. Imagine people used to walk long distance and they would walk months and months. Some would walk two months, three months, four months. Uh, and their niyyah uh, was to go and perform hajj. Now, to come and connect themselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To come and gain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَأَتُوكَ رِجَالًا They will come to you walking. وَعَلَى كُلِّ ضَامِرٍ يَأَتِينَ مِن كُلِّ فَجٍ عَمِيقٍ And on every leaning camel, they will come from a very distant valleys. Uh, Allahu Akbar. You find people coming from Africa. Nowadays, alhamdulillah, uh, with aeroplanes, people fly from Africa, they fly from America, they fly from Asia, uh, going to the same place, to Mecca, to Al-Mukarramah, now, and they do the same activities. So it teaches a haji, now, to learn brotherhood, to learn brotherhood, now. <clears throat> so now, and also, uh, 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 the person comes to learn uh, uh, equality to come comes to learn equality. Now he, he will look at himself. Maybe he might have uh, he might speak a different language, but that does not make him to be, to, to be better than the person who doesn't speak his language. Now he might be an Arab, so does not make him better than the a non Arab. He might be a white or black, that does not make him better. Now Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says inna khalaqnakum min dhakarin wa untha wa ja'alnakum shu'uban wa qaba'il wa qaba'ila lita'arafu inna akramakum inda Allah atqakum o mankind we have created you from one male and female from Adam alayhi salam and his wife Hawa alayha salam now and wa ja'alnakum shu'uban wa qaba'ila and we put you we have put you into different you know uh, uh, um cultures different uh, tribes in order for you 
to recognize one another. When you go for Hajj, you look at a person and you, 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 you are able to say or to point out that this person is a Chinese. This person is from China. This person looks like a, a Japanese. This person look, look like a, you know, he's from Turkey. Nam, litaarafu. That is for us to know each other. Huh? So it does not make you better than the other person. Nam, because of race or because of language. Nam, in Hajj, you are all equal. The people are all equal in the eyes of Allah. Nam, they are doing the same activities. They're doing tawaf, all of them together. Nam, they're doing sa'i. Huh? They go to Arafah and Muzdalifa, they go to Mina, they do halq, the shaving of the hair. Now, so where is the difference? Hajj is a typical example of one ummah, one united ummah. Now, uh, where everyone does the same thing. Everybody goes to the same place. Now, they will find themselves making wukuf at Arafah uh, on the 9th of Zulhijjah. All the hujjaj, all the people who have gone for Hajj, Nam, they find themselves making wukuf at Arafah. And that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, al hajj wa Arafah, that Hajj is Arafah. Any person who goes for Hajj without going to Arafah, without making wukuf at Arafah, so his Hajj is not valid. His Hajj is not valid. So when you go, to wukuf and make wukuf at Arafah, you go at Arafah, you'll find the Chinese, you'll find the Japanese, you'll find the people coming from Portugal, people from coming from England, people coming from, you know, all over the world. When you look around, you, look, you see your brothers and sisters, huh? your Muslim brothers and sisters from all the countries of the world. So this should make you happy. Now, so it's one of the secrets of Hajj whereby you will see different colors, people speaking different languages, now, coming from different countries. Huh? And what comes to the heart is that, you know what? All these people are my brothers. Al-Muslimu akhul Muslim. A Muslim is a brother of another Muslim. Fala farqa bayna al-abyad wal aswad. There's no difference between the white and the black. وَبَيْنَ الْعَرَبِيِّ وَعَجَمِي And there is no a difference between an Arab and a non-Arab. وَبَيْنَ الْغَنِيِّ وَالْفَقِيرِ There is no difference between the rich person and the poor person. In Hajj, you find those people who are wealthy. In Hajj, you find those people who are poor as well. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made provisions for them to go for Hajj. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has accepted them to go for Hajj. So you cannot make it out whether the person is poor or not. They are wearing the same kind of cloth, the two piece, the ihram, and they are all crying and raising their hands to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, the rich is raising his hands before Allah and is he's humbling himself before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The poor is doing exactly the same thing. He's raising his hands and he is crying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, so what is the difference there? Huh? There's no any difference. They are all the slaves of Allah. They are all the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one is better than the other. You cannot tell that this person is a president of a country. You cannot tell that this person is a minister. This person is a king. This person is a prince. Why? Because they are all the same. So one of the secrets of Hajj is that it brings equality now, into the ummah of al-Islam. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna akramakum inda Allahi atqaakum. That the most honorable person in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the person who has more taqwa, the person who is more pious. And you cannot say that I'm more pious than Muhammad, I'm more pious than Amina. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he knows the secrets of the hearts. Sometimes a person might act pious while when he is alone, he breaks the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who is able to tell who is a true, the true pious person. In akramakum, in Allahi atqaakum. The most honorable person in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the person who has more taqwa, who is more conscious about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The person who understands, who knows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is as-sami'u, 
Al Alimu, Al Basiru, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the all hearing. Whatever I say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hears. Whatever, you know, I do, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can see. And whatever I think, He knows of it. If I've got a secret in my heart, or if I'm plotting against somebody, somebody, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is acquainted of all of that. Inna akramakum, inna Allah atqaakum. So Hajj brings about unity. It teaches, you know, uh, oneness. It teaches brotherhood. Now, equality, uh, whereby we all see that, you know, we are all equal in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we have the same purpose, the same goal, which is to achieve and acquire the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to acquire Jannah. Inshallah, we'll take a short break, inshallah, and we'll see you after this. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to the secrets of Hajj. Now, so in Hajj, uh, as we discussed before, discussing before the break, that it, Hajj it teaches equality. Now, every Haji makes tawaf. Huh? There's no such a, uh, that you will say that no, because I'm from a certain country. Now, I cannot perform, uh, perform make tawaf. Only certain kind of people should perform tawaf. Every Haji, every every pilgrim. He makes a tawaf. Every haji, he makes tawaf around the Kaaba. Now, and he makes sa'i huh? between sofa and marwa. He comes to sofa, he climbs the mountain, or he goes until sofa. Now, because now it is uh, different, does not look the same as it looked in the time of Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam. Now, or in the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the person goes to Sofa and he comes to Marwa, he makes Sa'i. So they all do the same activities and they climb, of course, the Mount Sofa and Marwa. They, they all pair the Jamarat, huh? all the Hajis, those who have gone for Hajj, they have to pelt the Jamarat, now, the three stones. Now, and they spend together the night at Mina. Now they spend together the night at Mina. And each one have the same feeling. The feeling that, you know, I should be forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Each haji, each pilgrim, each person who went for Hajj has got the same feeling. The feeling of getting the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The feeling of having his sins forgiven. The feeling of coming closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Naam, and each one needs Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Each haji, each person who went for hajj is in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you will see the person cries before Allah. The person raises his hand and he asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. If the person, you know, was, is accustomed or was accustomed of, uh, to break the commands of Allah, to commit sins, now he has an opportunity to Cry before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the holy land as he is performing hajj. So each person needs Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not in need of us. When we perform salah, for example, or any good deed, it is for our own benefit. We are the ones benefiting. It's not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We cannot benefit Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, if all mankind all the jinn kind come together, they try to benefit Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, huh? they will never ever be able to benefit Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if all mankind and all the jinn kind, kind come together, they want to harm Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will not be able to do so. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al ghaniyu He is independent. as somad He is independent. Nam Allahu somad Nam Lam yalid wa lam yulad. He did not bear any child and nobody gave birth to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are all the creation of Allah. We are all in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need his rahmah. We need his help. We need, we're in need of his blessings. So when a pilgrim, when a haji goes to hajj, he goes and perform hajj. He shows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, Ya Allah, I am in need of you. So this is one of the secrets of Hajj.
And each person who goes for Hajj also, he needs Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness. You find the person making a lot of istighfar. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says regarding Nuh alayhi salatu wa salam, فَقُلْتُ اسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّكُمْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ غَفَّارًا huh? I say, Nuh alayhi salatu wa salam, he says to his people, Istaghfiru rabbakum, ask your Lord for forgiveness. Innahu kana ghaffara, because he is a ghaffara, the most forgiving. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives all the sins. So a haji, the person who went for, who went for hajj, he is also, you know, hoping uh, to get his sins forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because every child of Adam is khatta'un, according to the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. كُلُّ بْنَ آدَمَ خَطَّاءٌ وَخَيْرُ الْخَطَّائِينَ أَتَّوَّابُونَ Every child, every children of Adam are sinful. They commit mistakes and they, 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 they commit sins. And the best amongst them is أَتَّوَّابُونَ are those who are, you know, at-tawabun, those who repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he loves when a person comes, you know, uh, with remorse, you know, uh, with repentance, and he asks for forgiveness. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala becomes happy. Now, there was a man in the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, an old man. He comes and he asks Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, araita rajulan amila dhunuba kullaha, وَلَمْ يَتْرُكْ مِنْهَا شَيْئًا اَيْ لَمْ يَتْرُكْ مِنْهَا حَاجَةً وَلَا دَاجَةً إِلَّا عَمِلَهَا What do you say, O Rasul of Allah, regarding a man who has committed all kinds of sin? Now, uh, you speak about drinking alcohol, you, sp you speak about zina, you speak about, you know, all kinds of uh, uh, sins. Uh, and he wants to make tawbah. Uh, will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept his forgiveness, his tawbah? So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he asked him, Hal aslamta? Have you submitted yourself to Allah? Have you embraced Islam? Are you a Muslim? And he said, Amma ana fa'ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah wa annaka Rasulullah. And he says, the man says, I bear testimony, I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship besides Allah. And I bear testimony that you are the messenger of Allah. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, says that go Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, has forgiven you so the man was so amused he was happy and he was so surprised he asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ghadarati wa fajarati even my treachery and my deceptions now uh, whatever sin I have committed will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive me has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgiven me now so Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says yes wa ghadaratuka wa fajaratuka all your treachery and all your sins, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forgiven you. So the man, he started making the takbir while he was walking away from the gathering of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Fabada, you kabbiru hatta tawara. Ha, he started making the takbir, Allahu Akbar, Allah. He was so happy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forgiven him. Allah ta'ala is al-ghafoor al-rahim. He accepts tawbah. So a haji, a person who goes for hajj, he hopes to get his sins forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the man, he goes away and he is, you know, making the takbir, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, until he disappeared from the majlis, the gathering of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Similarly, a haji, when he goes for hajj, he has high hopes that he will get his sins forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we all know the famous hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, man hajja falam yarfuth walam yafsuq raja'a min dhunubihi ka yawmi waladathu ummuhu. That the person who makes hajj and he did not engage himself in obscene talk, in obscenity, in any sin. In, he did not insult anybody. He did not shout at anyone. He stayed away completely from the sins and he submitted himself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He followed the manasik and the teachings and the conditions of hajj. That person comes back home. Kayawmin waladathu ummu. Let the day his mother gave birth to him. He comes back forgiven. He comes back with a pure soul. He comes back home to his family. With what? With a pure heart. A heart that is filled with the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Now, the heart that is filled with the love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he comes back home a changed person. You see the person now, he's punctual in his salah. He was not punctual in his salah before. Now, the environment he used to live, it will affect him. But now he has gone for Hajj, he's come back, alhamdulillah, now he starts performing his five daily salah. You find him, you know, bringing, uh, 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 starting gathering of knowledge with his family at home. Huh? He will be reading the Quran, he will be reading the Ahadith, explaining also to his family members, so they can also benefit. So this is one of the secrets of Hajj. The person goes for Hajj, he comes back with a pure soul. He comes back with a pure heart. He comes back with Imams, you know, high level of spirituality. He is so close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is one of the, of the secrets of uh, uh, um, Hajj. And I think uh, uh, that uh, uh, it is among the secrets of Hajj is the person in Hajj. Now, he uh, has the opportunity to always be in the remembrance of Allah in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he acknowledged that, that his existence in this dunya as an abid, a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ That I have not created mankind and jinn kind except to worship me. Now, so the person understands that he's an abid, he's a slave of Allah, he's a servant of Allah, and my brothers and sisters, it is an honor to be a slave of Allah. It is an honor to be a servant of Allah. Even Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the Quran, Nam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Subhana alladhi asra bi'abdihi laylam min al-masjid al-haram ila al-masjid al-aqsa. Then glory be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Pure is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nam, who has... Uh, taken his slave, his servant, uh, to a journey by night. Allahu Akbar. That was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was called Abdun. Abdun, a slave of Allah, a servant of Allah. So a person who goes for Hajj, he acknowledged the fact that he is a humble servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, so he becomes more humble. And when he comes back, he comes back with this quality of humbleness where he will, you know, uh, Allah receive, you know, the highest status in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, just to end off, he says, Man lillahi rafa'ahu Allah. That the person who humbles himself for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will elevate that person's status. So we have come to the end of our program, inshallah. Until we meet again, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.